thank you everyone for taking that time to give Dawn some feedback. And let's give them a round of applause for taking that feedback. One of the things that we do at Toastmasters is we do evaluations. We give people feedback on what they can do better, what they did excellently, what, what we'd like to see them do more of, and what they can improve on. So that is always something good for us to practice. Leading the club to success is what I am here to talk to you about today. And it hit me as I was reading through the presentation that Toastmasters wanted us to give that a lot of those topics they wanted me to talk about, smart goals, how to coach, how to delegate, those are things that I think that we're pretty familiar with. Now whether we do them or not, that's a whole different conversation and discussion. I had a club meeting in which there was a revelation for me. And the speech was on intrinsic motivation. Now, guiltily, it was my Cranberry Area Toastmaster Club and Russell gave the speech. <laughs> Had no idea what the speech was going to be about, but the thing that is interesting is how you become inspired by the things that you hear. So what inspired me to want to do this speech to, with you today? First of all, I am a very, very tool-based person. If you are trying to accomplish something, we should give you the tools to make that successful. We should give you the things that you can walk away with and say, yes, I got something out of that. Wow, this is incredible. How do I share this information? It was amazing. Intrinsic motivation. What motivates you? Well, I did find it very interesting that all of the things that led into that speech in the beginning of the week. I heard it here today, and I think that's amazing. Starting with Jim. And hold on. I wrote it down. <coughs> Charlie, sorry. <laughs> Charlie, where's Charlie at? Hi, Charlie. It's talking with Charlie. The thing that is important to understand is our mindset is powerful and how we think about things are powerful. So if leading the club to success has anything to do with bringing in new people, coming to club officer training so that you know how to service your members. and giving speeches at your clubs. Why is, why is that important? Why do you see that as important? Leading by example. Leading by example. Why else is that important? Anybody? Not all at once. <laughs> the first six goals of the Distinctive Club Program are all speeches. First six goals are all speeches, yes, Joe. But why are we here? We learn from do we? Others. Yes, Mr. Humphreys, yes. We learn from each other. We do. We do. We learn from each other. But for those of you who have been a Toastmaster a very long time, do we not find this experience life-changing? Who has not been changed by this organization? Sometimes I think we forget what we've gotten when we got here. And that that is what we're trying to get people to understand that they can get out of our organization. Where is the passion for that? Were you not the same person when you walked in the door as when you had this experience? It usually unfolds over time. What did you come in for? Why did you join Toastmasters, Alita? Why? Yes, ma'am. I was so impressed with my first meeting. I, I, I was dumbfounded that that people can actually talk and 
do it so nicely. And I, I was just impressed. That again for the so she was impressed. Alita was impressed with her first meeting. She was impressed by her club. She was surprised that people could get up and, and do what they did. Anybody else want to share why they joined Toastmasters? Yes, ma'am. I love the talk in front of people, and it was a captive audience. <laughs> <laughs> she loves to talk in front of people, and it was a captive audience. Well, I'll share. I joined Toastmasters, not because I was afraid to talk, because obviously I'm very shy. <laughs> I joined Toastmasters because I was told I was going to speak in front of the finance quarterly and that meant talking to 500 people in one room. Amen. I ran to Toastmasters. We talked about how did you feel at your first club meeting. I wasn't even paying attention. All I knew is I needed to sign up on a piece of paper. What do I, what do, what do I need to do? Because they're going to make us speak in front of the finance quarterly. How can I do that in front of 500 people? How does that happen? Not afraid to talk. I had a speech teacher who taught us how not to say ums and ahs. Mrs. Acklin, I'll never forget Mrs. Acklin. Darlings, we don't say um and ah. Oh. If you can't find the word you're looking for, then just pause. People think that's very introspective. So that's how you handle that. Yes had some of that. It wasn't fear for me. But the first time I gave my icebreaker speech, I was surprised that I was shaking behind the lectern. I'm like, what the heck are you scared of? You're not afraid of talking to people. And there were about 15 people in the room. And it was a small group, not 500, 15. But I ran to Toastmasters and I joined. And I had a past district governor in my club. And I thought that meant, because they signed me up for vice president of education before I even knew what the heck that was. <laughs> okay. So a couple months later, I was reading what that meant. And I was the second in command of the club. I'm <laughs> like, wait a minute. How does that happen? And then that's the journey. Oh my God, if she asked me a question, I have to know everything. I have to know everything about the education program. So then that led to me going to all these clubs talking about the education program. And then I became Toastmaster obsessed and then the rest is history. <laughs> but it's what brings us in and it's that transformation that we go through as Toastmasters. That's why we're here. You leaders have decided that you're going to step up for your club. You actually came to TLI, which congratulations to you and give yourselves a round of applause, please. That includes the online folks. We appreciate you also as well. Because you don't have to sit here. Round of applause. That is deserving. Here's the other thing. What does that say about you to your club members? What does that say? Doesn't that say that you care? Why would you go to training? Because I want to know how to help you better. I want you to have the journey that I've had. I want you to have the experience that I've had. It's not going to be the same experience because every journey is different, but Toastmasters, as Karen so nicely put it, we care. We actually do. And we need to remember that that's why we show up. That's why we're here. So, no grammarians today. <laughs> What that means <laughs> is when the going gets tough and it is 20 below, not 20 below, we haven't had 20 below, and it's 7 degrees outside, eight days. <laughs> or 8 days in June's case, <laughs> and you're deciding whether you're going to come out to Toastmasters winter TLI, and you remember that transformational journey that brought you to the point that you are. That's why we do it. We want to ensure that other people get to experience that. I think we forget that way too often. 
And I think we need to keep that first and foremost in mind as we're helping someone through their icebreaker, as we're saying, okay, James, I haven't heard you speak for the last three months and the things have been rough. When can we hear a speech from you? It is not a demand on everything that we help our members go through helps us as a club and then it rolls up. That's the inspiration. That's the thing that you remember when things are not going as got exactly as you want it to go. We have to remember why we're here. Stay in tune and in touch with that. It helps you through those rough patches as you're going throughout the year. And it's important. So for me, Nate talked about the Distinguished Club plan. I always like to talk about this D Distinguished Club Plan because I am 100% against the whole points conversation. Some of you have no idea what I'm talking about and that's fantastic because you should. We are here to help our members achieve their goals and when they achieve their goals then we're excited and happy because that's what we do. Because we know when they achieve their goals they are getting through something that they have told us that they want to get through or accomplish. If you are scared to stand here and your knees are cracking and shaking and you're able to do that six months later, that's something to celebrate, right? And we learned today as club officers how we can do that celebration for our members. Remember the member, I think it was, was it Mike Storkey? Mike Storkey was one of the Toastmasters International Presidents. If we remember the member and know that that's why we're here, then we can stay focused on the goal. The goal is to get that member the best experience. If you have the member having his or her best experience, then you will succeed. It's also on the club officer to understand what that means. I had a person in my BNY Mellon Club way back in the day when it was just the Mellon Club. Andrew only wanted to speak once a quarter. He was 65. He was trying to retire, but he liked coming to the meetings and he wanted to speak. He only wanted to speak once a quarter. So as Vice President of Education, it's not for me to tell him what his journey should be. Now, some people might disagree with me. You join Toastmasters to speak. But for him, he just liked the camaraderie with his coworkers. And that worked for him. The pleasant journey, his journey, worked for him. That's what we need to understand. Why are our members here and what is their journey? That's on us. How we get to Distinguished Club, we understand today because we've been talked We've been told what that is. We understand that. We have to see how the puzzle pieces fit. And we have to sit together as a team to do that. That's how that works. We don't. We find out, we uncover, and we work with our members to get them to where they want to be. So the passion is the journey and understanding that. Today, I would like you to leave with something tangible. That's my desire for my club officers here today. And I'd like you to look around at your table and see if you have seven people sitting with you. And if you do not have seven people with, sitting with you, if you could get together in groups of seven, that would be fantastic. So does anybody need anyone at the table? Who needs one or two more? Okay.
We're just doing what we learned today. Yeah, so 
guys Yeah. 
discussing right now. They're having a discussion. Can you right actually set up this ad for some of you who are in the... Can she hear me? Yes. I can hear you. Oh, hi. <laughs> Hello, Madam TLI Chair. How are you? I am so sorry. I just took over. My problem. My problem. My bad. Sorry. That's okay. It's your party, too. Everyone, welcome Sharon. She's the TLI Chair. So Sharon, share one thing that you feel came out of the discussion for the online group. The one thing I felt was they got they put the puzzle together. They got two they got pieces of puzzle, but they didn't know how they fit and what the pictures were form. And now knowing the drug success plan, how it takes them into the moment of truth and how the moment of truth wraps back into the drug success plan. It's starting to click. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you, Sharon. Okay, inside the room, we just want one thing from each table. Just one thing. One person say one thing that they got out of this experience at the table. Table number one. Anyone? Yes. That's what I'm not 
And I'm, I'm doing this based on the discussion, discussion that we had. And then I did a double word, Melissa. One of the problems that we found with our club is low membership. So one of the things that we discussed under membership goals and strategies and tactics was to talk, do the three times a year encourage participation in Smedley, Talk Up, Toastmasters, and Beat the Club so that you can increase your membership. How many? We want to go, yeah, five, five, five each time so that we get us 15 new members. Fantastic. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Kathy. Table number two. Anybody? If you don't have anything to share, that works too. There we go. One of the areas that we focused on was how to make decisions and establishing different ground rules for making the decisions and having mutual consensus before we move on and if there's a conflict if somebody disagrees with the path forward or a certain topic to say here's how we will specifically resolve conflicts and have a plan in place at the beginning of the year so if a conflict does come up you're already ready to handle it thank you thank you We're just going to pass it around. <laughs> How long did you give us to do this? I don't know. All right. Where's, you, where's Mike Dalton? Where are you, Mike? 20 minutes. Do you remember how we went and had fun to put together our district plan, right? First, you get Stephanie to come to your club. <laughs> but if you can't get her, the president has to make it fun and put a how many minute? 20. 20 minute limit on this thing <laughs> and get it done and then go have fun. Okay. Yeah. Finally. Thank you. Fun. Sure. Here we go. Thank you. You're not going to say it. Jane, somebody. Yeah. Don't. Stop the monkey butt. <laughs> you got to explain that now. If you were in the vice president of membership session, you already know what it means. And so if you don't know what it means, then ask somebody. No. No. Don't have to All right. So one of the things that we talked about is the importance of getting new ideas, finding ideas elsewhere. And the only way you're going to find them is if you change the scenery. So go and visit other clubs. So I was visiting another club out west. And I arrived, and they had read the agenda. Last item on the agenda, stuff the monkey butt. I couldn't wait for the meeting to run all the way through and get to the last agenda. But I thought that it was very creative and in Xingwei. So at the front of the meeting, at the front of the room, there was a monkey, ceramic monkey, sitting there. And when we got to that, that part of the agenda, People came forward one at a time, turned over the monkey, put money in the monkey, turned it back over. And that entitled you to one minute to speak openly in front of the audience, to either give praise to a fellow member, or to publicly vent if you were having a horrible day. <laughs> then they used, the, they used the money that was raised from that to pay for coffee and donuts. Very creative way, provide opportunities for engagement, and to leave any guest curious as to what the heck is happening. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Last on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Mine relates to the education, how to become a president's distinguished club, yeah. because I'm believing that it's. I know it sounds impossible for a new club to become President's Distinguished, but I know it's not impossible. So one of the ways I think we can do that, or any club for that matter, is to ensure that every officer achieves one of the educational goals. And by doing that, you would have become distinguished already. Yes, I'm 
Further educational goals. What are some ways to motivate members to progress through the education program? Our newest member at the table came up with the illustrious idea of a member strategy session. Not a great idea, an illustrious idea. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. another layer of challenge for us. So we keep motivating. So whatever uh, I come up with, ideas, I share with her and she shares with me back. So that is another thing. And then uh, another challenge that I personally have is ideas converting to speeches. So 10 different ideas come and then the, when I finalize the idea, it will be already the next day. So Monday I have to get a speech now, tomorrow. <laughs> I didn't, I, my ideas did not converge into one idea. <laughs> so, so that is the biggest challenge. So I'm working with my mentor who is helping with me. How do I convert ideas to speeches? That is another thing. And the last one, we had one of our members uh, in this group that uh, has challenges. Okay. Knowledge or mastery of the tools like Pathways program, they have challenges, uh, technical challenges. So how do we face these? So Vice President of Education, be more proactive walk with the people and make sure those are cleared. Very nice. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, everyone. Was this valuable today? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You, don't, you don't have to go for that. I had fun today. I hope you had fun today. I hope you learned something today. And I hope you have something to take home with you. I would be remiss if I didn't, once again, James says eight days. So, we, we have an opportunity to be special. We have and two with, books tell me today, I'm going to get there. See, so, see, From she's already had that conversation. From the beginning of PLI, now says, we're going to get there. Yes. Fantastic. I could talk about stories all day long, but I am going to turn the microphone over to our incoming district director. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming out today. I'm very excited about our new Toastmasters year and happy to see all of your friendly faces. One takeaway I'd like everyone to have today is to remember that it all begins with you. District 13 would not be here without all of you. Oftentimes I find that people think about the club, but they don't think about themselves and their individual goals. And I'd like to say thank you to each and every one of you for coming out today. I look forward to working with you in the next year, but remember, if you haven't seen the little mirrors on the tables, take a look. It starts with you, and there is a thank you message on the back. Thank you, Maddie. See you all at our upcoming events if you need anything. 
just reach out, texting is best. But I would also like to introduce my incoming team. We have Fred Fornbrock, our incoming program quality director. Kathy Wolf, our incoming director. And I'd like to give a big shout out to our outgoing district director, Jim Humphreys. Thanks again, and I am going to be counting on those two clubs who said they will get there in the next couple of days. Oh yes, oh yes, sorry, sorry, I, for, I forgot. I saw her. <laughs> and <clears throat> for our incoming division directors, Julia it is online, I did see her earlier. Julia, are you still there? Our incoming division A. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Julia. Julia, are you still there? Oh, oh yes, we are. Yeah. And then our division C. Yep, yeah. 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 TJ, division C director. Yeah.